We don't need another hero. We don't need to know the way on. Oh, great. We on. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome, 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 welcome to the mental house. Whatever side of the day, ask for that your own. Welcome. All my Facebook and YouTube subscribers to the mental health. All right, y'all know I come on here and just um, just get some stuff out because y'all know it's more room out than in. I like for you to like, subscribe, share the video if you see fit. I wish I could ask y'all to tag, but I'm learning to put the tags in, so that's a very good reminder. And I took um, one of those little YouTube classes, and that's what it said that. You know, so maybe that's going to help uh, with my analytics. So that's what I really want to do. But anyway, with that being said, I got a question. That's why I put this whole thing in a thinking format, right? And I got a question for y'all. You know, um, I want to know, honestly, and for my white listeners, you know, don't be sensitive to it. Because I know if y'all here with me, I know y'all get it. Okay, so... This is just hypothetically, and I don't mean to offend anybody. Okay, so let's start right there. You know, I want to know if it's just me. Or do y'all feel that white people don't talk about negatively about their heroes or their, you know, founding father, maybe George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, you know, Benjamin Franklin, all these guys, um, and I don't know, I really want to say Adolf Hitler, because every time I turn around, he's on the A&E channel, he's on the Discovery channel, I'm like, why is Hitler on every time I turn on something on the television, and I know for a fact that all of his doctors and all of those scientists that were responsible for a lot of that mayhem were just imported over here during that time. A lot of those guys just you know, jumped on a boat or a plane and came to America. It's like, okay, work's done over here. But nevertheless, that's not my point. I don't understand how I've never heard a white person say George Washington is a bitch or a hoe. You know... I've never heard white people talk about this, even though there is not hardly one white person that I know now with the last name of Washington. Every Washington I know is a black person. Is that coincidence? Hell no. It's because all his children were black, black people. So, my point is, I've never heard white people trashing George Washington. And that's a good thing. I'm not knocking white people for that at all. I'm not. Um, what about Thomas Jefferson? I've watched a, a flick on television that tried to convince me. See, they're always trying to convince you. It's just like a real matrix mind fuck. That Sally Hemings and Thomas Jefferson had a love affair. Y'all think that was a love affair or do you think it was rape? Where is the Me Too movement on that? Let's start... I mean, listen to this. And then she had all those children by her sister's husband. Because Sally Hemmings' sister was her half-sister, obviously. And she was married to Thomas Jefferson before she passed away. Because her daddy had did the slave and got Sally. Y'all get this craziness? Okay, wait a minute. I gotta sneeze. <coughs> okay? <coughs> okay. Now, with that being said, <coughs> please don't let me do it again. How in the world does Sally Hemming and Thomas Jefferson get relegated to a love affair, a love story? When in my thinking it was rape. Okay? But I don't even hear white people trashing Thomas Jefferson. I never hear that. 
The only people I hear doing that is black people. Black people trash black people all the time. As if we've been trained, engineered, programmed, a chip in us to hate ourselves. Hmm. On every, on every level. I was listening to Byron Scott from the, who was he coaching at the time? I think he was coaching the Cleveland Cavaliers. He said that black players don't want to respect black coaches. But when a white coach come in, are y'all saying this the guy Punty is that good of a coach that the Bucks are playing a little bit? Well, they're, they're now playing who they are. But you think that he was that much better that Jason Kidd, that they wouldn't play for Jason? And then when the Bucks got rid of him, the the Bucks went on a kind of like a nine game winning streak. Well, I'm sure um, that happens. You know, I'm I'm sure that happens, and it happens because, of course, there's a shake up in the system and things like that. But on the other hand, is it really maybe true what Byron said? Maybe they want they they play harder for the white guy. I don't know. I'm just saying these are things that make you go hmm as Arsenio has said. What collective group have you ever heard talk about their people? The way black people hate each other. We don't have any respect for our elders. Now I granted it's a lot of young people again that has not even been raised by their parents. They've been raised in group home and I know for a lot of y'all y'all can't even respect or relate to this reality so this ain't for you but I know that they're out there so they don't have the love of a mother and a father and a connectivity because they just been in foster care went from daycare to foster care and somebody has always been handling them and they don't have any stability and what you think comes out of that cold distant um, apathetic type of envi uh, 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 environment it, it, it breeds the same type of children. That's mm -hmm. why you can see a person from my generation who I'm not a Catholic, but I wouldn't dare again curse out the Pope. <laughs> it's just something I wouldn't do. I, I've been brought up a little bit more, and my children wouldn't do that. Okay? Because we respect people, we've been brought up to respect. I want to respect from you, so I have to give it. Okay, um, and if whatever you call it, but you can't come if I want a loaf of bread. And I heard that thing with Tupac when he says, um, uh, um, first we're gonna say, Can I have a piece of bread, please? He said, At some point, they're gonna be going like, We want the bread, we want to eat. <laughs> I can relate to that, and I get exactly what he was saying, but upon first impression, and not even first impression. When you know that there's people like George Washington or Thomas Jefferson or people that in our culture that are high, held to higher regards, whether it's Marcus Garvey and whoever you deem, whether it's W.E.B. Du Bois, whether you don't like him or not. But I wouldn't start a conversation calling W.E.B. a, um, a, you know, I'm trying to think of what, you know, an asshole or a you know, just mean and spirited names because what's going to happen is going to turn anybody off unless, you know, they that, that, that will want to hear it because it's like, why are you attacking me already? And I want to know that why is it only that we do that? Do you think as a group we have been taught to be suspicious, disrespectful, to malign one another um, and that it's very easy? Do we think because that's something that needs to be challenged. What stage of grief are you in? Okay, because I get where the anger is. We have every right to be angry at what has happened to us. But we can't stay stuck there. And this is part of the five stages of grief. Where are you? Okay, where are you in this? Because we can't, I mean... Anger is a very good emotion, and yes, it does get some things moving. I agree, but you can't stay there, and you can't wake up every morning angry. 
your baby can't feel that anger every morning. You got to find some point of acceptance so you can go. You can exhale and then give your baby that. You understand what I'm saying? So I want to know if it's me. And I know I've been all over the place, but do you think that we've been taught to be suspicious of each other and then there's no hope? And then when you got these young people who haven't been raised with love, do you think that that has a point of to a contention to play in how they feel about us as elders, how they disrespect us, like, like, like we're trash in some cases. And now I have my opinions about where they come from, but again, like I said, I've listened to so many young people tell me why they hate their mother and why they hate their father, and, you know, and what they bear witness to is little kids and this trauma. Everything is so trauma based because it shapes your world, your amygdala. It just keeps moving. It keeps playing this tape over and over and over again. Your brain can't rest. It can't until you address this stuff. Do you feel it's true? Do you feel like you just hate on a fellow black person or quick to say a black person is doing something just because the outer, bigger, larger society says that? And where did it come from? And in your opinion, do you feel like, no, let me just, how about, this? let me share this. I feel, I think I'll start that like this, that America is a narcissistic, is built on narcissism. It's a system built on narcissism. You can call it racism and all that because it's all part of it. But the narcissism of it is, the black people are the scapegoats. In brown bodies. The black and brown bodies are the scapegoats. The white society. Are the golden children. So they can do no wrong to each other. And they shit on the brown people. And the black people. And they have developed a mindset. Because in that. I'll turn the other cheek. And because. The, me addressing this. Will affect my security. It's going to affect my finances so I'd rather pretend just like anybody else that's watching abuse that I don't see it or I agree with it um, and I play into the um, abuser's hand so as the scapegoat group we're dealing with this dynamic and in turn, it causes us to have certain behaviors about one another, in my opinion, that is destructive and full of pain. And we can't continue to grow in a pain body. We got to let go of some of this pain because it's the pain that is causing us to turn on ourselves. Okay? I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not trying to be one, but I just had to interject with that because when my nephew said that, he, he, he was so right. Do you ever hear white people talking about their heroes and people that you know did all kinds of atrocities? Do you, ever, do you ever hear white people talking and bashing their leaders the way we bash people in our community? And so if you have, okay, tell me when and I'll be glad to hear it because that's important. I'm not saying they don't have disagreements, but I'm saying we try to cut to the core. You know? And I know groups have different ways of doing things and theirs and to some degree is more clandestine. I'm well aware of that. But the grassroots folks that you know, when you have to make an assessment collectively, is it that they hate each other? Because a lot of times that's the way people see black people. And I certainly see a lot of that in, when I look at it. There's a lot of self-hatred. Okay, and a lot of this is based on experimentation and social social engineering. Oh, well, that's my take on it. Put it in the Rubik's cues and you turn it up and y'all tell me what y'all think. Okay, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And then please leave your comments below because let's start some dialogue. I want to hear it. I want to hear it, Cletus. All right, have a good day.